OK, now, what we're going to begin with is, uh, over the past week, so much of the country hit by extreme floods, more heavy downpours, even snow in some areas last night. Absolutely awful, the scenes of devastation mm -hmm. that we're seeing. Uh, so many people being advised to evacuate their homes. Uh, we're now going to cross via FaceTime to Pam Webb, uh, who owns... Oh, Pam, you look in tears. I'm, I'm really sorry. This is in Fish Lake in, in Doncaster. Tell, tell people about what's got you so upset today, Pam? Um, the, the reality, the reality is dawning now. Um, the floodwaters are receding and probably that what that was masking is now open for us to see. So the homes um, and the flood damage is now evident. And it's the reality of, of facing what we've got to do in this clean-up operation and, and how do we move forward and, and get back to any kind of normality. And at the moment, that seems such a long way away. Well, look, for you, it's not just about uh, where you live. It's where you work as well. You have a, you have a spa um, and, and your whole business seems to be ruined and you can't even go back and stay in your own home. No, that's right. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, no worse off than a lot of people. It just feels like a little bit of a double whammy that my home is also where my business is as well. Um, and it, it feels... So daunting to think you can't even sleep in your bed at night and then get up and, and think let's crack on and let's get this back open and operating and, and the girls that work for me can get back to their job and, and their livelihoods are going to suffer and the people that have worked with us at Truffle Lodge um, can, can, can be assured that we will be there and open and we can fulfil those bookings sometime in the future and at the moment it, that feels like a very daunting task. And Pam, how, how long did it take you to build up this business? And how uh, long do you think it will take you to get back on your feet, if at all? Um, four years to build the business, um, through great reputation reviews from guests, guests returning, um, recommending other people from, from far and wide. And I've been proud to, to say I'm from Doncaster and a business in Doncaster and... And, and this beautiful, beautiful, picturesque village, you know, even when we're looking at, at it submerged in water and we see the aerial shots, we're still proud and think what a great place to live. Now, look, um, th this would floor so many people, but so many people um, can bounce back with a bit of insurance. Um, you have not had luck on that front because um, you just basically found out you had insurance, but it was insufficient insurance. Yeah, so I had, um, I, I wouldn't be foolhardy enough just to think, oh, I'll not bother with insurance. Um, you know, that'll mean that the business creates more profit. Of course, I wouldn't do anything as silly as that. Um, what I did discover, my broker called me back. I, I put the call in as soon as I could on Saturday morning, uh, phoned me back on Monday morning and said um, the insurance was exempt because there was a, a flood exemption clause within that insurance policy for both the her for the, for the the business and the home. I, I, I don't know what advice to give you or what to say to you, how indeed you do pick yourself up and I see people trying to get back to their normal lives there um, around you doing what you do. Do you think you've had enough help from the authorities, from central government? Do you think you could be doing with, with more backup? And initially completely let down um, by the local authority, by the environment agency, um, by uh, central government. Um, what, what we're now seeing is, is some sort of, sort of plan coming together um, and, and we've got help. DMBC now have set up a hub within the village hall where people can go, just go and find out practicalities of, you know, the, the, the small amount of money that they say that they will release. At least people can go and, and get that. Uh, just, just somewhere where they can go and find information. You know, so many questions that were being asked that, you know, we didn't know the answers to. So, so that's now set up. Um, a lot of police on the ground. The army, as you'll have seen in the coverage, have built another barrier bank there. there. There's lots of more sandbags coming in. Some would say too little, far too late. Um, and as you, you will have seen, we got Mr Johnson to visit um, and he made certain pledges with regards to nobody who has been a victim of these floods. And it's not just Fish Lake. There's a local community in Bentley equally suffering as well. He made the pledge to us that we, um, no victims of flood would suffer financial loss. 
that's a heck of a promise. All I think is I hope he keeps to it. Yeah, well, you hold them to it, Pam. You I hold them to it. Um, thank you very yeah, much indeed. You. God bless. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say to you, really, but, you know, keep on keeping yeah. on. Thank you very much indeed, Pam. Come and see us, Eamon and Ruth, when we're back up and running. We'd when you open to. up, you're We'd quite right. You're quite to. right. I could do with a spa break. You're quite right. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, you very Pam. much. I wonder thank who will bring Shush. on that. Uh, listen, someone else, it is absolutely devastating, isn't it, when you see people's homes, their businesses, and someone else who knows the effects of this extreme weather is farmer Henry Ward. Now, his farm, as you can see there, has been left marooned by water up to 10 foot deep. He's having to use the boat to get to his home. Uh, we sent Alice Beer to see him. She's live now from that flooded farm in Lincolnshire. And I can see you're, you're on the water, Alice. Yep. I mean, it's just a, a surreal sight. Um, this is uh, talking about isolation. Pam felt isolated. Well, this is Henry Ward's farm, and that over there is his farmhouse, completely isolated. It's marooned, uh, surrounded by 250 acres of deeply flooded farmland. Henry, I'm so sorry. When did this happen? Yeah, so the river behind us is the Barling Zoo, and it burst its banks on Saturday morning. And since then, water levels have been rising. We've had heavy rain since. And so we're currently sat on top of six to 10 feet of water, and it's covering over 1,500 acres of land. Um, were you, you knew that this was at a flood risk because it flooded in 2007. Were you in any way financially covered for this? OK, well, what I'd first like to say is it did flood in 2007, but nothing like this extent. Um, we aren't on a floodplain or a managed floodplain by the Environment Agency. But no, so our insurance, we're covered for any damage to property, anything like that. But no crop loss, loss of future earnings. So here now, I'm not going to have a crop for 12 months. And the, the financial impact on my business is going to be unprecedented. Do you know how much? Um, tens of tens of thousands. Um, you know, it's uh, so I'm a young farmer, I'm only 28. I've just started on my own two feet. This is the first year I've took this particular block of land on. And uh, yeah, this is what I've got to start with. Um, so it's uh, just unprecedented for me, really. Now, you've, you've got into talks with the Environment Agency um, because you feel very much that your property has flooded um, to save homes and a, a built-up area further down the river. What did the Environment Agency say? Yeah, so we met with them yesterday morning and it was the first time that we've seen anyone from the Environment Agency um, since it happened, so it's took them five days to contact us. So we felt really on our own with this one, to be honest. And what I would like to just say is that heartfelt sympathies go out to those people flooded in Fish Lake and other, you know, residential areas. Um, and farmland shouldn't be up on the priority along with, you know, people's lives and houses should be way above farmland in terms of priority and flood prevention. However, we feel that the Environment Agency is just using it as a floodplain we're not going to get any compensation for this. It could potentially put me out of business. I'm just recently engaged, my fiance Emma, and um, what starts a family, um, you know, and I've got this to contend with. It's, uh, it's horrendous. But if they don't protect the land, then you are being used as a floodplain, and the National Farmers Union are working very hard with the Environment Agency to get farmers' compensation. Um, the Environment Agency, I know, say they will continue to be in talks with you. Um, they're in a difficult situation at the moment. It's hard for them to talk because of the, uh, um, the election purda that they're in. But yeah. the, the, ironically, the Environment Agency isn't far away, is it? No, so um, the Environment Agency is uh, just over there, which I think you can see. Um, so they're not far away at all. We haven't had much contact with them. I will just say the NFU have been absolutely fantastic in all of this and give me a lot of support. But yeah, to, um, it's good that we, if this water hadn't gone onto our land, then the east end of Lincoln would have flooded. There'd be hundreds of homes and hundreds of people's of lives affected in the city. However, I do think it's grossly unfair that I should be expected to take the cost of this. The Envi Environment Agency, I believe, have been negligent. They haven't been dredging waterways for over 50 years. I think the 60s was the last time it was done. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just horrendous scenes to be sat here talking to you on this boat this morning. Completely surreal. Well, uh, the Environment Agency do say that um, they are putting massive amounts of funds into the dredging of the rivers. Um, I mean, ironically, look, that's the Environment Agency building. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, hello. Uh, perhaps you didn't notice that uh, uh, Henry's got a problem over yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, isn't Alice, that just we're, bizarre? We're, we're listening the to Henry. Agency is sat on the yeah. edge of this. 
We're listening to Henry there talking about, you know, the cost to his business. We heard from Pam um, uh, Webb there in Fish Lake about the yeah. cost to her business. She found out that she wasn't insured for yeah. flood damage. What about advice for people in terms of insurance yeah. claims now or for anybody, all of us, to check our policies? OK. So the first thing to do is work out whether you are actually on an established uh, flood risk area. And there's lots of digital uh, maps online on the government website. You have to, and the Environment Agency website, you must establish whether you're at risk from flooding. If you are, then you must make sure that you're insured under the government's flood re-scheme if it is a domestic property. And that is protected by all our premiums go help towards payments for people who are vulnerable to flood risk. So they will be protected. Small and medium-sized businesses, perhaps like PAMS, should be protected under their brokers, under the broker scheme of the British Insurance Brokers Association. They are working to protect small businesses. Um, I'm not sure of PAMS' specific uh, example, but it, she should be protected under that scheme. And as for the farmers' compensation, as for Henry, I mean, obviously, this, this land is uninsurable, but really, we must be working to compensate farmers because if we feel that we're not affected, we live a long way away from these areas, it's distant to us. Well, first of all, all our insurance premiums will be going towards the insurance for people who are in vulnerable areas. And if you don't think that there should be potatoes under here, under this mm. boat right now, 10 yeah. feet below this boat should be potatoes growing. If you don't think that that's going to affect the cost of the food on your yeah. plate mm. in months, years to come, then, yeah. you know, you're kidding yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Alice, absolutely. That is very sobering to see that. Um, give our condolences to Henry for all yeah, that he's going sorry, through Henry. there. And, and thank you very much. Stay safe, the both of you. Uh, as Alice uh, was saying, Henry's crop completely uh, ruined yeah. there under that. And we've got to keep that connection al alive between field and fork mm. because we, we forget well, that Alice at our peril. Well, Alice is saying when, it's, when, it's, when you're not near it, mm. it's easy to not think you're involved or it affects you. But it's the knock-on effect, isn't it? Insurance yeah, but policies, we should be supportive food. of our farmers. That Absolutely. lad, he's 28 years of age, yeah, he's undertaken that. Absolutely incredible, and uh, we should think a lot more. When you think about, you know, like this election and all the issues that they all end up talking about, and the really important thing, how we feed ourselves, how we grow, how we keep people in employment, mm. people like the farmers. Farmers are often put at the bottom of the list, uh, always.